Hey everyone, it's Kabir here. So in last video, we saw the mounting phase. So in today's session, we are going to understand about the updating phase and what are the life cycle methods that we have in the updating phase that are nothing but that is nothing but whenever your component is going to update it, it is going to re-render in your DOM during that phase, what life cycle methods are going to trigger that's what we are going to understand right so let's make some text file so like something here file one dot text okay just to list out the life cycle methods what we have discussed in the previous to previous videos right so what is updating phase whenever you are going to update your component it is going to re-render whenever your component is going to re-render few life cycle methods are going to trigger so what are that life cycle methods the first method it is going to trigger nothing but your static method that is get derived state from props this is the first method which is going to trigger what is the second method it is going to trigger it is nothing but component Co sorry it's not component it should be like should component update this is the second method it is going to trigger and third one is nothing but your render method right and the fourth is get snap short before update and the fifth it, it is going to trigger is nothing but component did update so these are the five life cycle methods that is going to trigger whenever your component is going to re-render that is nothing but whenever it is going to change some state or whenever we are going to call some set state method right so what is the use of this static get derived state from props in this it is a perfect place where you can write your state initialization instead of constructor it's best place to write get derived a state from props i mean we can write the initialization of your state that particular logic inside this method or else you can write in the constructor as well but you should not call any api calls or asynchronous calls inside this method and you and you should not call your set state as well in this particular method that's the first thing now what is the use of should component update this method is going to return a boolean value that is nothing but true or false by default it is going to return your true so whenever it is going to return a true your component is going to re-render sometimes you might uh, change your state but you don't want it to re-render your component that time you have to return it as a false right so that's one option you will get so it gives your perform like it will increase your performance of your application in the same way third time it is going to trigger render method that is nothing but your component is going to render in the dom that's fine we know that one and the fourth one is get snapshot before update this method is going to trigger after your component is going to update or render in the dom and this method is going to take two parameters that is nothing but previous props and previous state like this method is going to give you the previous props and the previous state values like before updating what was the value of your props what were the value of your states that thing you can access in this method and the component did update this method is going to trigger after your get snapshot before update and this is the perfect place where you can write some asynchronous calls you can do ajax calls you can uh, like send some request so all that things you can do in the component did mode so this is a description of the methods so let us understand is it executing the step by step or not practically so 
let's go to our component so already i have implemented the code just to save the time there is nothing just i'm going to explain you properly right i took one class component okay class component and the name of component is nothing but unmounting face okay this is the constructor i have wrote one constructor in that constructor i defined one state and in that state i have defined one property known as name known as a sagi means i have initialized the state right then i have defined get derived state from props method where i have just wrote console.log in the same way i have defined or and implemented all the life cycle methods so just we will check out this is the first we told it is going to trigger first whenever component is going to update and component should update this is the second method it is going to trigger and third it is going to trigger your render right third it is going to trigger your render in this i have prepared one ui that is nothing but i took one p paragraph i mean p tag and i have told that i am this dot state dot name so initially we have initialized the state with the name sagi so it is going to display in the browser like i am sagi okay and i have took one button because i want to update the state right that's what we wanted to see so for that purpose i have took one button and i have wrote one on click event so whenever i'm going to click on the button one method is going to trigger and the name name of that method is click me so the controller will go goes to click me so i have defined the click me method so what click me is going to do it is going to just call set state it is nothing but it is going to update your state so from name sagi to name kabir so what happens whenever your state is going to update it is going to re-render your component so whenever your component is going to re-render all these life cycle methods are going to trigger okay and this is the get snapshot before update okay and this i have defined like component did mount so let us see whether it is working properly or not and it is updating step by step or not so let's go to our terminal so what we have to do npm start so i have entered so just let's wait for our execution of our application so it's running development server started so let's see the output how it is going to look like it's still loading it's still loading it is taking some time to load to start the application i don't know why it is taking so much time and the guys whoever new to our channel don't forget to subscribe it because we are going to give you very rich content on react and that is absolutely free in future we are going to develop a e-commerce project as well so just see here we got the output so i am a sagi this is coming because of the state we have initialized the state with the name sagi and i have to one button so now my requirement is whenever i am going to click me it is going to update my particular p means from sagi it is going to say i am kabir okay so whenever i am going to click yeah it is said i am kabir so now we have to check whenever a state has been changed whenever your component has re-rendered so what life cycles are methods are triggered and in which sequence it has been triggered so let's go to our inspect so I came to inspect, just go to console. So we have got, just clear it, just refresh our page. So let's execute. Now we have got the first time it is going to trigger get derived state from props. We know that and render, okay. Just clear it, right? Now the initial value is I am saggy. Now I'm going to click on button. So it means I'm going to change the state. Now it's I am Kabir. Now just see to your life cycle method. The first method is get derived state from props, then should component update, then render, then get snapshot before update, 
and component data blade. So whatever we do defined, that's everything triggered in the sequence. So this is the sequence of your lifecycle methods that are going to trigger. So that's all for this session, guys. Thank you for watching my video.